Very hip. Very cool. Very hip. Very now. What a good audience. I feel very New York right now. I feel very, very area code 212. I, I do. I feel very path train. I just feel very 3rd Avenue, very East 67th Street. I, I feel like a performance artist. I feel very Yoko Ono right now. I do. I want to hang myself from these rafters nude and read the Declaration of Independence. I don't care how long it takes. It's spring. I'm, I, I'm spitting and I'm wearing... <laughs> Why do people spit? I, I, it's frightening to me. I'm wearing a very, very, very tasteful, very conservative black suit. Because when I wear a black suit, I am the alternative everyman. When I wear a very tasteful black suit, I'm Donald Hollinger. I'm looking anxiously for that girl in the plaza of Lincoln Center. When I wear a black suit, all of a sudden, I'm an ill-tempered, nasty yuppie, assuming a loan. <laughs> When I wear a black suit, all of a sudden, as if by magic, I become a high fashion model. <laughs> With the IQ of a small dog. When I wear... When I wear a black suit, as if by magic, I become a businessman flying to Tokyo in a 747, walking up a spiral staircase to a lounge. <laughs> When I wear a distinctive, quiet, tasteful black suit, I want to use an American Express card and eat beef. <laughs> I want to kiss the hands of a prostitute. There are so many things I want to do when I wear a black suit. I was thinking, though, because it's important what you wear. Mr. Bill Boggs will tell you that. I think my first choice tonight was I was going to wear a, uh, a pair of polyester Kelly Green slacks. I was going to wear a pair of slacks and a dickie, but I thought, no, no, no. Because there's nothing more bothersome than to turn the television on and see a man in slacks and a dickie. I love the word slacks, though. Isn't that a great word, slacks? I like the word cot, too. I like the word cupcake. I like the word nap. You know, it's like, I took off my slacks, I laid on the cot, I ate a cupcake, I took a nap. Slacks. I should tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Los Angeles, California, uh, which is a nice place to come from if you're an orange. I had a very, very, very nice childhood. Uh, I went to a very, very, very California high school. Uh, the number one excuse for being tardy in my school was that you were involved in a custody battle. Um, <laughs> We're dudes are dudes, and dudes are dudes. California, dude. Imagine if Jesus was born in the valley. Imagine if Jesus was born in California. He'd be a Malibu messiah. And instead of disciples, he'd have dudes. And they'd follow him around, and they'd wear Reeboks and, and cords. And they'd say, come on, Jesus, change the water into Michelob light. Wait. Jesus would say, you guys only like me because my dad's God. <laughs> but the true dude of life, the dude that I respect so much is Fred Flintstone. He is such a dude. He is a Paleolithic dude, if you understand me. He is so cool. He's the only guy that I can think of that can wear a leopard muumuu and pull it off, you know? <laughs> Very quiet, tasteful leopard spots, except Wilma. Uh, We've got to discuss Wilma for one second. She is on the prehistoric rag. She is unbelievable. She is the bitch goddess of the animated world. I'm telling you right now, Wilma's bone is on too tight, okay? Release the bone, Wilma. Let it go. Thank you very much. Well, this is really exciting because uh, Karen Haber and Taylor Negron have, have done a, their own television uh, series. I, what made you want to do this? I had been getting a lot of scripts. Scripts? A lot of scripts, and I thought that it was time to get back to work. Uh, I was getting a lot of scripts, too. Actually, I got so many scripts, my agent got mad at me. <laughs> I'd always wanted to do a television yes. show, and ideally, I, I, my heart was set on doing an all-white version of what's happening. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, the network just couldn't get it together. Well, actually, which network is, is this a uh, new show for? Bill, all three. 
It's the first time in the history oh. of television they're going to show one show on all three networks simultaneously. It's a lot of pressure because basically we're going to be up against ourselves and every other show made. Yes, you know. I guess, I guess, but it's very exciting because this year they announced that the Battle of the Network Stars is going to be actually held this year at the Colosseum in Rome. You know, I and they'll be using real lions. It's going to be. <laughs> I always wanted to know how do they pick the sides on the Battle of the Network stars? They take all the big stars, they put us in a big gymnasium, and then Tony Danza and Ed McMahon choose sides. Oh, that's terrible. Nobody picked us. <laughs> Have you kids done a lot of TV before? I did a pilot five years ago called Nine is Enough and was fired, and they said, Eight's enough. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I, please, and I also played a, a belligerent uh, stuntman on The Fall Guy. Huh. <laughs> I, um, well, I've, uh, I've had guest stars on Punky Brewster, Give Me a Break, and I also played a cadaver on Murder, She Wrote. Oh, that's quite a successful listen. I think everybody's kind of excited about this, and uh, what's it called? The show is called The Taylor and Karen Show. And, and we have a clip. I think that this, the network sent over a clip. I think there's a clip. I think this is the episode where we first meet. Oh, well, come on, now, let's take a look. This is going to be good. Who is the guy that has two different shoes on? Who is the girl with the kooky hair? Who is the guy that you never depend on? Who is the girl that's never there? It's Taylor. Subway rides seem nice Central Park seems safe at night They're too much Who is the guy that you know you should run from? Who is the girl with the vacant stare? If you're in town and you happen to see them Don't take a chance cause you've got Subway rides seem nice Central Park seems safe at night They're too much They're too much Doctor, last night I had the most peculiar dream I dreamt that I was in a traffic jam in China I spent the entire evening trying to parallel park in Peking I was to follow some friends of mine to a party and I lost the address. I was very lost. People were yelling at me and throwing foreign vegetables at me. That is a terrible dream. Well, I mean, I was an ordinary child until they changed Darren's unbewitched. I mean, one minute there's Dick York and then there's Dick Sargent. You don't do those kinds of things. My fear was that I would come home from school one day and have a new dad. I was in the dating game 15 times. I thought it'd be a good place to meet girls. All I won was rice a I want a relationship. Why can't I meet anybody? I feel like I know you. Do I know you? I have seen you on the dating game 15 times. I never missed a rerun. Did you ever win? No. I feel like I know you. Do you want to have coffee? I, I'd like to go to your apartment. Okay. This is my apartment. You're not going to believe this. I have the exact same apartment. Well. No, no, I have the exact same apartment. You have to come with me right now. You have to see my apartment. I have the exact right same now? apartment. No, I have the exact same apartment. <laughs> You're not going to believe I have the exact same apartment. The exact same apartment. Who's the guy that you know you should run from? Who's the girl with the You're not going to believe this. We have the exact same apartment. Taylor, it's the same. What's wrong? 
I'm just so insecure. What happened to you? Taylor, I was an ordinary child and my, my mother switched husbands on me. It was just like in that TV show, Bewitched. Remember when they switched Darren's midstream? Taylor, I came home from school one day and I had a new dad. I love you. They're too much. They're too much. Well, I'll tell you, that is the kind of fresh entertainment that America needs today. Well, thank you. We're working right now to get Charlton Heston to play my father in the final episodes, but he's very expensive and he's a social friend. Anything else we should, we should know about these I'm speakers? not sure, but, you know, just to stay unique, I think we're going to be able to get a flying nun as our wacky next-door neighbor, and we're trying to get Haley Mills. Oh, this is yeah. great. I really, I'm so happy for you, kids. Well, it's, it's just the work that matters. It, it is. It's it is getting right. it together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Bill. Coming up, Taylor's photo session right after this. You know, for fun, when Taylor came to Newark, we, we gave him a camera and said, go around the city and take some pictures. I have not seen these pictures. I want to see what happens. I had a great time. I, they gave me a camera, and I took pictures of New York, and uh, I'd like to show them to you. All right, let's it was, go. It was very Warhol-esque. Um, I, always, <laughs> I always look for the hippest club to go to. This is an ultra-hip club. What it is, is, a, is it seats one, it's a cab. <laughs> and you, and you, this, this incredibly gifted jazz musician plays smoke on the water on his horn. <laughs> And he does an incredible uh, light show with his blinkers. It's an amazing thing. This is my entourage. <laughs> I uh, rented them from Entourage Rentals. Uh, I'm, right there I'm, on my left is Madonna, who is a brunette. And that is the El DeBarge family. A lot of these people were seen on the cover of the Sgt. Pepper album. They're, none of them speak English. I went to a very, very celebrity-filled party. That's Robert De Niro uh, on, and Gregory Hines. And in the middle is the man who played Pepino on the Real McCoys. <laughs> This is my friend Lynn, who has that incredible Marilyn Monroe on acid look. But <laughs> the reason that I'm showing the picture is because that's George Steinbrenner in the back right there. And right after the picture was taken, he tried to sell me a watch. Um, we went to a Spanish-Japanese restaurant where they did not serve sushi. No sushi. <laughs> the redheads in New York are beautiful. No question. This woman had a bun cake burning, and she was in a rush to get back. <laughs> This woman was a belligerent drunk. They were making her walk the line. <laughs> now, this is a slum going up. They're building a ghetto, a slum, but now they just advertise it. Grandeur, distinction, magnificent. It's a slum. And now we go, you know, I like a woman who wears a basket on her head. I think it's an important look. Call me conservative, call me a traditionalist. Next. This is me with my designer, Mr. Willie Klein. Right here, I'm sporting the Uncle Fester look. That's, um, which is a fabulous look. And right here is my Scottish designer friend, Mr. Billy Fungus from Scotland. The Mike Douglas Show is set is in New York. Right now, right now. I'll do it right now. And this is, oh. this is my discovery. This is my discovery. This is a punk rock band that is going to like surpass the Go-Go's. It's going to surpass the Bangles. 14 years old, the Dee Dee Domino. I'm going to give you a little lyric sample. I'm going to warn you, a lot of the lyrics are not suitable for adults. Um, I'm sitting alone on the Miami sand. I'm living in a lonely world, and I will never go on vacation with my parents again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dee Dee Domino. 14 years old. 14 years old. This is Dee Dee Domino. Please, let's hear it for them. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta warn you, though. 
they've never been, this has never been seen before except for 10 seconds on the Joe Franklin show. That tape? Yeah, Ooh, so that's a Joe nice. scooped us. Girls, want to stand up and say hi? Ah, oh, there the you go. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine um, the careers they're going to have. They're going to have an amazing career. They're very Nabokovian. <laughs> um, right now, I want to introduce a friend of mine who is the lead singer for the Golden Palominos, which is a very, very, very fine group. And you can see their video on MTV. It's called Boy Go. And Sid's, Sid Straw is her name, and she's on her way to the Montreux Music Festival in Switzerland. She's very, very talented, and her and I went to the seventh grade together. Please welcome my dear friend, Miss Sid Straw. So okay. you're going to Switzerland, you're going to Japan? Not until we do the show. I know. Today. <laughs> now, I, this girl and I grew up together. We did shows in Malibu. It's all true, and you've really grown. I'm a lot bigger. You are. Hey, yes. Bill? Yeah. Is it true that you're a closet Kennedy? Not really. The teeth. You're I have wondering, the Kennedy teeth. Are you sure you're not these high? Anyway. How's your grandmother? My grandmother, she's great. She doesn't remember me half the time. <laughs> <laughs> but she's really as charming as ever. Well, you know, my grandfather still walks on his roof with his walker. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you should meet his My grandfather is unbelievable. He's 97 years old, and he walks into buffets. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, so you're going to Japan. You're, uh, you're very, very famous. This week. This week, but you have, a, you have your second album coming out? Uh, any second. Yeah? Now, what song are you going to sing for us today? Well, it's a condensed version of a song that Peter Holsapple wrote. He has an incredible. Called, he's amazing. Peter Holsapple from the DBs. And uh, we, we edited it for television. And, uh, and it's a, kind of about losing people, losing track of people along the bumpy road to love. Hmm, we can identify. You know that. what I mean. Let's listen. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Sid Straw, Didi Domino, Karen Haber, and our star tonight, Taylor Negron. Absolutely enjoyed it. How do you feel after a whole show like this? My moose is still standing up, so good. I feel good, you know. <laughs> My hair is still antler firm. <laughs> I feel very good. It, have you been doing some reading? About well, you know what? I just have to tell the world and alert them on the finest magazine I know. It's called Cat Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you I like heard, about it? I